Hello dear friends from around the world. Welcome to a new tea class with me, Stefan Erler. I'm the founder of the Tea Masters blog and the T-Masters.com tea boutique. Today we come to our conclusion of our winter tea class about high oxidation oolongs and fully oxidized wet teas. This Uh, tea today is uh, therefore going to conclude this class. It's called Hong Yu, number 21. We will see in a few moments what this means. In the next week, we are going to have uh, some other um, classes. I will do one about this book, Emperor Hui Zong. I already have written an article on my blog, but I also wanted to share some thoughts by video for those who don't Don't have time to read it and um, I'm also going to talk about uh, our first spring tea from the year it's a Bilo Chun from Sanxia and it's uh, already there uh, available in my uh, boutique and uh, I will soon also uh, renew a new interview but uh, this uh, will be probably for the end of the month or for the next month then uh, I will think about organizing a new tea class, but I have not uh, fully decided what teas it should uh, uh, contain, maybe new teas from, the, uh, from this year, so therefore maybe we have to wait a little bit longer. Anyway, let's start with this uh, session, this last session, and uh, therefore I'm going to use this lesson also to do a, a little bit of a summary of what we have learned and that uh, really this class of um, teas, high oxidation and fully oxidized teas, they have started during, only during the Japanese era. Um, the very first mention was in 1917 and um, the establishment of um, uh, wet tea, uh, this uh, uh, Japanese company called Jedong that was competing with Lipton, this was in 1930 uh, in Sun Moon Lake. So we are really today with a tea from Sun Moon Lake that uh, is going back to one of the original uh, terroir, one of the original region for making uh, red tea. Let's have a look at these leaves. So since this has a number, number 21, this means this is a tea that was engineered, that was researched by the Taiwan Research uh, an extension uh, center, station actually. And uh, so actually this is um, the Taiwan Tea Research Lab. They are doing lots of things. They are uh, helping farmers to uh, develop new cultivars. And this is therefore the cultivar called Hong Yun. Uh, Hong means red. Un means aftertaste, so this is probably uh, a tea that with a lot of aftertaste that we'll, we are going to find out. It looks pretty similar to the Hong Yu that we had last week. Uh, remember Hong Yu, uh, uh, red jade or ruby, is a tea that is a mix of um, Burmese, uh, Assam kind of tea and a Taiwanese wild tea. Today this um, Hong Yun is a breed of a Qimen red tea from Anhui, China. Uh, this cultivar that is producing Qimen red tea crossed bred with um, an Assam from India this time. Therefore this explains that uh, these two teas are very similar, not just in their name, Hong Yu, Hong Yun, but um, also in the shape of the leaves. And in both cases, we have the parents of these cultivars very much uh, in, uh, made for wet, for wet tea. Huh? Assam uh, from Burma or from India or um, Chimen are cultivars that are used really mainly for wet tea and therefore it's not a surprise that this cultivar, number 21, invented or officially released in, in the year 2009, would also be 
really designed for red tea. Now, we'll already see that it looks pretty much like a Hong Un or a bit like an Assam kind of um, leaves. Maybe the leaves are a bit smaller, a little bit finer. Uh, and what about the smell? Uh, the best way to smell this tea is in a jar. Mm. It's quite different from last week. Last week we had lots of spices, clove, cinnamon. This Hong Un has actually citrus smells. That's why I put this citrus as a decoration and also as a reminder for the smell. And definitely, if you smell these dry leaves, they have these fruity citrus, maybe orange or clementine or mandarin smells. Let's see what it makes when you are brewing it. Now in Taiwan, it's already 10, year, uh, 10 um, o'clock in the evening, therefore I'm not going to use too many leaves to brew. If you are in the morning in the US or in Europe, you might want to use a little bit more leaves. But since this is supposed to be a very powerful tea with a long aftertaste, I really recommend that you be careful and really try to taste this tea first with the fewer leaves because otherwise it could be a little bit too overpowering. And uh, well, like this is also a way to uh, uh, make a good, better use of, of the leaves. Uh, they are a bit more uh, complex than uh, Assam, simple, the simple Assam cultivar because of this crossbreeding. And this crossbreeding means this uh, cultivar is really special and unique to Taiwan. Uh, you are not supposed to find it uh, anywhere else in the world. And um, the reason they've really they released this uh, cultivar is because uh, they thought that compared to a simple Assam cultivar, this brings more complexity and uh, finesse in the aromas. We are going to find out in a few seconds now. Let's empty our cups. Since I did not use so many leaves, I'm letting it brew a bit longer. Checking the smells, very nice. So this one was um, harvested in the summer, very warm temperatures in the summer in the Sun Moon Lake. And this helps to uh, get the oxidation level at the highest point possible uh, because Wet tea means we need to oxidize the leaves fully and hopefully also try to preserve the integrity of the leaves. This is a little bit uh, less obvious uh, with my leaves because they were at the end of the package, uh, but the brew is very transparent dark red here you go i even have a very few broken leaves in the brew i can mm, I smell some german sourdough bread uh, this is a uh, um, yeah the schwarz brot uh, it was this smell now reminds me of um, sourdough bread and um, this black sourdough bread from Germany. Mm. And it has a nice um, mm, nice long aftertaste. Huh? So it has it qualifies for the for its name Hong Un. Mm. 
maybe a little bit of um, yeah, maybe of some citrus, but also this um, moist black uh, uh, bread, more the inside part, the moist part, not not the crust, and um, a very fruity um, kind of smell and um, a kind of a taste that is very different from the Oriental Beauty which is more oolong-esque, more sweet and, um, and soft. Here we have the character from uh, the Assam, uh, from Indian tea, which has a more robustness, um, more uh, a bit of uh, some bitterness and astringency. This is a, a kind of tea that uh, could also be used in um, an English tea kind of setting with uh, milk uh, and a little bit of sugar, I think. But if you don't um, use too much, if you don't use too many leaves, just like this, actually, it's not um, too bitter. I can completely drink it um, on its own without any additive. Mm. And it produces more complexity, more finesse than uh, regular Darjeeling and even uh, and um, different aromas from the Hong Yu, the taste. I see some similarities, but instead of being more spicy, it is um, yeah, a bit more um, citrus and uh, um, a little bit more fruity rather than spicy. So this is uh, another great example of how it uh, how red teas continue to evolve in Taiwan thanks to research, thanks to breeding of different cultivars. Uh, this is one of the latest that has come out in uh, in the market some 14 years ago and it is building on the history of Taiwanese red teas that started during the Japanese era in the 1930s also because of the rivalry uh, with England and also because of the aftershock of the Great Depression 1929, the Great Crash, after which uh, most countries started to have uh, to implement protec protectionism uh, to put uh, tariffs, the smoothly, uh, the smooth Harley tariffs in the 1930s. So it was more and more difficult to export. Uh, tea to uh, various countries and uh, therefore and also to import so the, Japan did not want to import English tea from the rivals so they preferred to make their own red tea uh, in Taiwan which has a warmer climate than Japan itself so more suitable for, for red tea so uh, the cultivar here in Taiwan we have a great variety of cultivars we have seen that since 2005-2006, with the revival of red teas in uh, Asia, the, uh, all kinds of cultivars in Taiwan are used to make uh, red tea. We even saw uh, uh, a red tea in Alishan made with the Qingxing Oolong cultivar. But uh, it's also possible to find red teas that are made with uh, cultivars that are dedicated, that are really uh, sought for making red tea and this is one of the best cultivars in uh, this regard, uh, this Hong Yun number 21 and made in the original region of the Samun Lake, uh, a region that is six, 800 meters high. It does not qualify yet as a high mountain oolong, as high mountain because we are just below 1000. Uh, and the soil there is a bit acidic and this is um, a soil that is very suitable also for making tea and we have a good uh, warm climate around this lake and uh, the Japanese already recognized this was a very good place to make red tea and we continue in Taiwan now to make red tea there. Uh, I hope that this has given this class has given you a good overview of the possibilities and the variety of uh, high oxidation oolongs and red teas in Taiwan. There are many more that we could explore, 
but uh, we'll leave it at uh, this one. I thank you very much for uh, your assiduity, for being there, learning with me, and uh, please give me some thumbs up and uh, give me also a subscribe if you have not done it yet. And we'll see, I'll see you next week for another T class. Thank you.